In this video, we're going to go through the three optimization practice questions I gave you in the last video. If you have not yet watched the last video, 3.7.1, I encourage you to do so, as this video is going to go much faster and I'm really just going over the solutions and not talking through the process. If you didn't watch the last video or watched it but didn't write down the questions, these are the questions that we will go through. Again, I encourage you to work through these on your own before you watch me work through them. I'm not going to spend the same amount of time on each question as I did in the last video uh, because I simply wanted to let you do some more practice and provide you with the solutions to check your work. So for our first question, we have a container in the shape of a right circular cylinder, which basically just means you've got a right angle where the base is meeting the height um, and there's no top. It has a surface area of three pi square feet. What is the height H and base radius um, to maximize the volume of the cylinder? So again, we've got that we're trying to maximize volume and we're given the surface area of three pi square feet. So notice I did my primary equation, which was I'm trying to maximize the volume. So based on my picture, that's pi r squared times height. My secondary equation would be using that three pi square feet, which is obviously a surface area. Notice I found pi r squared, which would be the surface area of that bottom. Um, no top, so there's only one of them. And then two pi r times height gives me this rectangular region in the middle. And I set it equal to three pi and then isolated one of the variables, I chose h. Then I went back to my primary equation and I replaced h with my new expression and I simplified to get as simple as I could get it. Then I took the derivative and found the critical values. We didn't care about negative one, so I didn't worry about it. Um, I did have a precise endpoint here, but I don't really care, as I told you before. Um, if you have a precise endpoint, so if you don't have that, you're not gonna be docked off in my class. And then of course, I just found the fact that this is obviously a maximum. Um, and then I would plug in the maximum the max of one back into this equation to find the height. So since one is a maximum using the first derivative test and pi plus two pi h equals three pi, h has to be one, so that's the height. The dimensions to maximize the volume of the cylinder are the radius is one foot and the height is one foot. Question two, we have a sheet of cardboard three by four. Um, and so again, this is four feet and this is three feet. Be made into a box by cutting equally sized squares from each corner and folding up the four edges. So really, I've just got a lot of X's, right? What are the dimensions of the box with the largest volume? So this one was actually um, a little bit harder because we're used to having a secondary equation and we really didn't. Um, so in this case, we just used volume as the, so, if you're thinking about taking these four squares out of this, I'm basically folding this up so that I've got a rectangular um, solid that is four minus two X by three minus two X by X, which would be the height of the figure. So that's what I have here. I've done all of the work to simplify. I then found the derivative. I set it equal to zero and I had to use the quadratic formula, which again, I didn't show. Um, and so here I actually had to um, use a critical number or an endpoint. So I said three minus two X, if that were zero, then X is 1.5. So I didn't have to use the 1.768 in my table. So I can see that using my table, I did end up with a maximum at 0 0.566. I plugged it back in to find um, the values of four minus two X and three minus two X. So that gave me these dimensions for the largest possible volume. Question three, we have a cylindrical can. This one is giving us volume. So this is obviously a volume. 
The material for the top and bottom costs $10 per meter squared, and the material for the side costs $8 per meter squared. So this is getting more and more complicated, as you can tell. So I am trying to make the most economical can. So I'm trying to minimize the cost. So the cost is based on the surface area, because this is obviously a square meters, so that's surface area. So how do I find the cost of the surface area? Well, I would find the surface area, 2 pi r squared, so that's the circle on the top and the bottom, and I'm going to take that times 10, because that's the top and the bottom. And the material for the side cost 8, and I'm going to find the um, area of essentially a rectangular figure that gets rolled around, which is 2 pi r times height. And then I'm just plugging in whatever I know. So here's my cost. For my secondary, I'm given the 20 pi meters cubed, and um, that is for volume. So how do I find the volume? I take pi r squared times height, and notice I put that equal to 20 pi. I divided each side by pi and isolated the h. Then I take that primary equation, and I'm going to plug the h back into that primary equation, simplify, take the derivative, set it equal to 0 to find any possible um, critical values. In this case, plus 2 is the only one. I see that based on this, this is obviously a minimum. So 2 is a minimum using the first derivative test, and then I'm plugging that 2 back in to find um, anything else that I need to know. So I know the dimensions to minimize the cost of the cylinder are a radius of 2 and a height of 5. Coming up next, we are actually going to skip over section 3.8, Newton's method, and go straight to 3.9, differentials.